Hey everyone, so it has been a minute since we have done a home vlog. I'm gonna stop right now. Caleb, go flush your toilet, please. Oh! <laughs> yeah, real thing. Um, okay. <laughs> Waiting. <laughs> Today is October 1st, and if you've been watching us for a while, we this is a special day for us. It's one of our traditions. Yeah. Tonight we're gonna make homemade French onion soup, and we're kicking off the Halloween season with an American werewolf in London. Makes zero sense at all whatsoever, <laughs> but it makes a ton of sense right. for us, and you guys can go back and look at those old videos, which I'm sure Mike will link below. Yeah. But uh, this is the launching of Halloween season for us. This is how it starts. So we're very excited. We're gonna have soup, and it's 98 degrees outside, right. but, it's tradition, so we will do it. And this is a new Dad, thing. Hey, I tried. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's half dead. Yeah. So Caleb okay. is obsessed with Nintendo Switch. So, um, we're allowing this. This is happening. So, it works. I'm trying to find a different game with a guy. Oh, okay. The guy with the purple. The guy with the purple. Yeah, it was the door next to it, and then you cross. Oh, okay. I don't know where it is. I have no idea what he's talking about. So I haven't played this game yet. I'm not the Switch person. It's more Mike. I typically stick with the Xbox and the PlayStation, but he's figuring it out on his own. I figure if like I don't help him, he's going to figure it out on his own, and that's what he's doing. So as we said, it's October 1st, so Mike has already started to uh, put some of the decorations out. So uh it is very low key right now we typically do a little bit more but hey it's day one so this is pretty good so far and we did go to lowe's today amongst a lot of other places to do some shopping but we got this really cool fun haunted mansion oh can you put it back on haunted mansion um oh sorry sorry yeah it needs it's going to die in a second because it needs new batteries needs new batteries Anyhow, so it projects pictures of Haunted oh, Mansion in a dark batteries. room, so we're kind of excited about that. Okay, and what's Fred Chung and soup without onions? So Mike's over here, he's prepping this right now. Um, how long does this process take? It takes a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't remember, but I know you have to simmer, or you have to cook your onions down for like 15 minutes, then you do something, and then there's like another 30 to 45 minutes. I know there's always a step that you mess up. I don't. Every time I vlog this, I've messed up. I put the flour <laughs> in too early, so I, I'm gonna remember this. Are we, are we sure? Yes. All right, let's make sure we do it right. <laughs> All right, so it begins. Mm -hmm. And also, in the past, before Caleb was older, we would actually, the tradition was we would actually watch American Wealth in London while we made yeah. the soup, but it's like, it's, ra it's not a problem on, at all. So yeah. he can't watch it. But I decided we could watch the old Wolfman, so okay. I've got that on in the background, so. We have all these traditions, especially around food, and you know, I have to admit, like, I'm hopeless in the kitchen for the most part. <laughs> no, so. you're good, you're good. You made, um, you made Caleb's uh, croque madame for lunch today. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a ham and cheese sandwich, not that hard to make, but with a good egg. I did make a good yeah. egg, so there's that. But uh, yeah, I, I like how we establish all these traditions, which basically means Mike is just working in the kitchen all the time. So. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Hey everyone, so I'm jumping in here real quick. As you know, you're watching um, October 1st footage, which was on Sunday. Today is Tuesday and I'm editing the footage. And I wanted to kind of, I wanted to jump in to kind of give everybody, especially if you have kids, a little bit of a heads up. The next bit of footage I find at this point a little disturbing because, and Steve is going to explain it, but we went to Target that morning to go buy ingredients for the soup and we let Caleb pick out a toy from the value section. And this toy, it was, I don't know, it was like $3, but it was made for kids three and up. And you know, when you don't think anything's gonna happen, Caleb totally hurts himself with this toy and we just happened to be vlogging when it happened. And in that quick moment, it doesn't look too bad. He gets a scrape on his face. But over the past couple days, it has gotten so bad. We've been putting, I mean, it's, it's not like infected or anything. We've cleaned it and everything's fine, but like the next day, it looks so bad. It's just so red. We've been putting Neosporin on it. I did see this morning, there's been a little bit of a progress, so he's good. But like I said, I just wanna give you a heads up. So if you're at Target, maybe steer clear of this toy. All right. Whoa, where'd it go? <laughs> that was fast. And it went on the couch. It went around the couch? It went under, it went under the couch and came right out. All right, let's see if you can do it again. This is one of Caleb's uh, recent requests from Target's value section, so 
He got this this morning when we were shopping for the French onion soup ingredients. All right, let's see. Ready? Oh, Ouch. we got to do it. Oh, buddy. This thing is super sharp because it has sharp blades. All right, well, you got to keep it away from your face. Keep it away from your face. Okay, good. All right, go. Pretty cool. I do a camera and you do it. I thought you do because you're the best. All, right, all right. Do you see me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Do you see this? Yeah. All right. Here we go, Caleb. You ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. You got another, another flying scene with a blade went way over there. Oh, no. Yeah. So he asked <laughs> me to do it. <laughs> so first off, the first time he did it, he like clipped the side of his face. And his cheek. <gasps> oh, my oh, gosh. I, uh, Caleb. Oh, wait, have we just... Have we told what this thing is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the value section thing at Target. Are you okay, bud? So first off, he like he hit his cheek here, and okay. then, and then he had me do it, and I did it too good. So now <laughs> over in the neighbor's yard. So we're gonna we're gonna scooter on over there. He's gonna scooter, and we're gonna ask for it back. So okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Here we go. No, let's run and get and no, don't. What? Somebody have, might have one and make it fly. And someone might have one and make it fly back to us. Oh, and, maybe. Maybe. And, and we have to go get it again and maybe we'll have one. <laughs> Figure it out, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> On our way to retrieve the disc. Okay, so while Steve and Little Man go and retrieve his flying disc, I'm going to kind of show you guys, um, for those of you who want to follow along and make this recipe, I will show you right off the bat what some of the ingredients we're looking at. So we've got two and a half pounds of onions, and you want to make sure you have two and a half pounds before you start peeling them and slicing them. And so this is what it's going to look like. You're going to peel and slice all of them. And you're also going to use some butter. You're going to use uh, some beef stock. I usually go through about two of these. And then we're also going to be using some cavassier. And the recipe calls for a dry white wine. So we're going to be using, I'm hoping you can see this, this decoy Sauvignon Blanc. And you guys know me, I'm always cooking out of this book. And someone, one of you just messaged me the other day saying that you got this. I love this cookbook. But that's where this recipe comes from. I'm going to be using my Dutch oven and I have this set over medium heat and I'm going to add five tablespoons of unsalted butter. As my butter is melting, I've got my next two ingredients ready to go. I've got my sliced onions and then we're also going to be adding just one teaspoon of sugar. Okay, my butter is melted so I'm going to go ahead and add my onions. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. Give this a little stir. As you can see, my pot is almost full, about three fourths of the way full of these onions, but these are gonna cook down significantly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add just one teaspoon of sugar to this. And we'll go ahead and mix that up. I'm gonna give it a good stir just to make sure everything's coated. And then we just leave this here just like this for about 15 minutes, stirring only occasionally. I'm always very hesitant to add sugar to recipes. We have a meal kit and I swear it's like every recipe they have me add anywhere from like a teaspoon to a tablespoon of sugar to like sauces and stuff. And I just, I don't, I don't do that. I don't add the sugar and the sauce always tastes fine. But my understanding is that the sugar for this recipe, um, it helps brown the onions like faster, I guess. I don't know. It's like the only recipe I do where I actually add the sugar. But this is already smelling so good. I love the smell of cooking onions in the house. Mmm, yummy. All right, so did the nice lady throw it back over the wall? Yeah, I think, I think it threw really hard. Yeah, she did a good job though. Yeah. We should say thank you again, huh? Yeah. Okay, it has been about 15 minutes. Um, gave my onions a little stir. As you can see, they are browning very, very nicely. This is what it should look like. And I also wanted to point out, we are getting some scorching here down at the bottom. Don't worry about that too much if that happens to your pot, because once we add our stock and our cavassier and white wine, that will come right up. Oop, I'm getting a little bit of foggy, foggy lens there. Um, so yeah, don't worry too much, but also, but, but obviously, you know, be careful. If it's really scorching really, really bad, then obviously go ahead and adjust your heat or maybe add a tablespoon of water to your onions. But at this point, we're gonna go ahead and lower the heat to medium. And then we're just gonna go ahead and let these cook down from anywhere from about 30 minutes to up to 45 minutes. But this time, oh, I thought I had my spoon there. Um, but this time we're gonna wanna stir more frequently and just keep a close eye on these guys. 
So Mike has requested a cocktail that would pair with this. So since this is French onion, I'm probably gonna do some sort of French cocktail, whether it's a, a Sazerac, which is actually you know based here in the US, but it's French influence. I definitely like that one a lot. Um, but we'll have to see what I'm gonna what I'm gonna batch up here in a second. And over here we got Mr. Brie. Is Brie your favorite? Yep. Watch your knife, buddy. <laughs> he can literally like chow down an entire wedge of brie by himself. All right, so the cocktail I decided to make is gonna be a Vu Carré. So that requires a rye whiskey. This one is very good. It's uh, Castle and Keys Restoration. Uh, rye delicious, requires sweet vermouth, some cognac, we're using Cavassier, and some Benedictine, and then two kinds of bitters, both Peychaud's and Angostura's. Measuring out all the ingredients here. This is a very straightforward cocktail, so. This is the Bucare, you said? Bucare. Okay. The only difference is some of the main liquors, you're all doing three quarters. This is Benedictine. You're only going to do a half ounce of that one. And then we've already had it all measured out. We're just going to add our dashes of our bitters here. This is Angostura. And then this is Peychaud's. We're good with that. We add some ice. And we give it a good stir. And we're using a mixing glass again because we're using a mixing glass again because there's no juice in this. Otherwise, you would shake it if it has juice in it. So this is definitely a mixed drink. Set that to the side. Get your tumbler. We have an ice sphere in here. We're gonna go ahead and strain this over the ice. Look at that clear ice. Isn't that beautiful? We're going to take a fresh lemon peel and we're going to express the oils over the drink, rub it around the outside, and place it directly into the cocktail. And Lou Carre, Mike, this is for you. And again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the way these French words oh, are supposed to be pronounced, yeah. but Lou uh, Carre based on how I know how to read it. So here we go. This was a very fragrant lemon peel. That smells so good. And that's why it's important to make sure you express it over the cocktail. Oh, that's good. It is? That's really good. All right, good. Um, so I always get confused with like this one and the Boulevardier, and I feel like, and I think it's the Negroni. I think it's because they all kind of look the same. This is probably my favorite. That doesn't make any sense, but okay. What do you mean? <laughs> the Boulevardier has Campari. I think you're thinking the Sazerac. But I'm. Th but they look the same. Okay. Perhaps. I don't think so. Oh. Campari's bright red, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I like this one. Well, I love that you like it. Yeah, that's really good. All right, good. These onions have been cooking down for about 25 minutes. Um, they are looking really good. They're just so beautifully browned. Um, and the stuff that's on the bottom, it's easily coming off with just my wooden spoon. Um, I'm using my Le Creuset Dutch oven, so this is um, enameled cast iron. Um, but like I said, once we add our liquids, it's going to come right off. But I'm... You know, like I said, this can cook down from anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. I think I'm gonna try and stretch it to get to the 45 minute mark. We'll see. All right, so this is looking pretty yeah, caramelized, can, right? Yes, and I think it's just at the point where it's gonna start burning any second, like you kind of smell it. Yeah. So I'm gonna stop right here. This has been 35 minutes. Right. So now I'm gonna add and one. And this is the part, folks, he's always forgets to yeah. do. <laughs> So now I'm gonna add a tablespoon of flour okay. and I'm gonna stir it in and you gotta do it, it's just for like 45 seconds. And then we're gonna add our liquid. Just FYI, what you are about to see me do here is incredibly dangerous. Please don't do this. I'm adding my cognac directly to my soup and I did not turn my flame off. That is so dangerous. Um, but I wasn't thinking clearly. I wasn't prepared ahead of time. But I'm adding three tablespoons of cognac along with half a cup of dry white wine. But please turn your flame off before you do that. All right, you definitely smell the ethanol, like right. the actual like, burning of the alcohol right now. So we're cooking off all the alcohol right now. Um, this step is a little stressful because you got to do it really quickly and I wasn't prepared. Um, but you got to add your one tablespoon of flour and then you do it really quickly to kind of create that thickening agent. And then you add your uh, the cognac and the white wine. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stir this up for about two minutes and then we're going to go ahead and add our beef stock and we're going to add seven cups of that. All right, so this is looking really good. Smells really good. You can smell, you can, we, we burned off all the alcohol. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and add our beef stock. Again, this is seven cups. So once you've added your stock, you're gonna go ahead and partially cover it. I do this little thing with my spoon here. Um, and you're gonna wanna let it simmer on medium heat for about 25 minutes. So as we said, like we're totally in the Halloween spirit and mood right now. So this morning we were actually going around and shopping at Target, a couple different places, and just kind of really taking in some of the decorations and the cool figures and what have you. Uh, and Caleb had a great time. We went to Spirit Halloween. He saw some really cool um, figurines, or I don't know what those things are called, Mike. The the pop up like characters or whatever the the the, yeah. the scare things the that they have in front, the animatronics. But he had a great time with that. He kept on wanting to go back to do that. And then we actually popped over to Lowe's because they have a pretty good Halloween section. We talked about that with the uh, Haunted Mansion stuff, but in the parking lot was this like cool little setup with, that the fire department actually did and the local police department where we got to see a vintage uh, police car. And then also they were teaching fire safety. So Caleb got to see a fire truck up close. He got a cool little firefighter hat as well and like an activity book. So it was a pretty fun morning. Okay, so our soup is simmering and it is almost bedtime for little man but what are we doing uh we're watching johnny appleseed because someone learned about johnny appleseed at school oh can we see your hat that yeah. looks awesome this is caleb appleseed right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah on disney plus they have the johnny appleseed story so we're watching that yeah so we had to google it a bit because i know mike and i have seen it before it's a part of the melody time um show Oh, it was a movie. It was like yeah, I think it was Melly a movie. Time movie. So it's a combination of a bunch of uh, short stories. Yeah. But I remember this growing up, and the second I saw his hat, I'm like, oh, it's Johnny Appleseed. He's like, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, be at home a really long time, and Johnny Appleseed died. Because oh. his name is, was at home a really long, super long, way for the apple ready. Okay, but I think you'll see. I'll, I think you'll see what happens after, though. He's pretty happy. Let's watch. Okay, so my timer has gone off. It has been 25 minutes since my soup has been simmering, so it just allows all the flavors to develop. Um, so at this point, you would per the rest. At this point, per the recipe, you would season it with some salt and pepper, and you'd be done. But I have a secret ingredient that I add to my French onion soup that really takes it to the next level. I add a little bit of this. It's from Williams Sonoma. It's organic grass-fed beef demi-gloss, and you could easily use the veal demi-gloss if you wanted. Um, this obviously is an optional step. Like I said, it's my secret ingredient that I add to the recipe, but it just makes it all the more flavorful, much richer. It's so delicious. By the way, I forgot to mention, um, I actually just add about like a little teaspoonful, or not a teaspoon, I add like, you know, just a regular a regular spoon, like a, something you'd eat your cereal with. I just add a spoonful of that and you're good to go. The soup is done. Yeah. And you like it? It's very good. Yeah, it's very, very good, very rich, very decadent. The flavors, lovely, lovely. The flavors are really great on its own, but mm -hmm. to know what's going on top of it, yes. it's very exciting. So that's what I'm gonna get started with next. So I've got this block of Gruyere cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and shred it. And we're gonna then make some toasts. And you know, cause we're gonna do this right. We're gonna make real French onion soup with the toast and the cheese on top and we're gonna broil it. Steve is over here making the croutons. What I like to do is I like to get a French baguette. This one we actually got yesterday. Little man, like I said, he's been on a kick with bread and brie lately. Yeah. So this is leftover from yesterday, which is actually works in our favor because you want it a little stale. We slice it pretty thick and then we put some butter on it and now we're gonna toast it. We're basically making like buttered croutons. Yeah, this is really healthy. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then I have gone ahead and grated all that Gruyere cheese. We're going to go crazy tonight. This is our tradition. We look forward to this every year. And it's the only night of the year we actually do this. So we're going hog wild. All right. So these are the croutons. So it's been buttered. It's been toasted. I think that it's going to have a nice like crusty exterior layer to where it's not going to soak up all of the soup. Right, Mike? Right. Here we are with the croutons being placed in perfectly good. And I can say that I contributed to the meal because I made the croutons, yes. so I'm very happy with that. And then we like to do a lot of cheese on this <laughs> because, you know, why not? We have the broiler on, right, Mike? I think it's broiler. Broiler. Yeah, so you're looking to just really kind of toast the top part because as if it's not hot enough, we're going to make it even hotter, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, so what was the song you sang earlier? 
Hmm? What was the song you were singing earlier? I've been singing a lot of songs. Why? Yeah. What do you mean? Um, I put a spell on you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We watched Hocus Pocus 2 last night. Yes. What'd you think? Um, it was generally entertaining. Mm -hmm. I think I it had a so. very good beginning, and then it it really got kind of cliche in certain parts. But yeah. overall, like, it's not going to be as mainstream, I think, as the first one. For sure. And I, I think it was kind of a four sequel, which is kind of bad. So A little bit. Four sequel, yes. I felt like it started out really strong. I liked that opening scene when yeah. you get to see them when they're younger. I thought that was really, really great. I have to say, when the Sanderson sisters, like, when, when they appeared. Midler, when yeah. they first come out, it's a little cringy. I was like, More oh, than cringy. Like, we came out we came out too strong out of the yeah. gate, right? Yeah, like, who comes out of their grave singing? <laughs> <laughs> so, there was that, but, uh, but overall, though, I thought it was good. I thought it was entertaining. I liked it. Yeah, like I said, it's an entertaining flick, so... Yeah. We like it for the sake of Halloween because we love Halloween, but, like, it's definitely... It could, it could use some work. Right. Yeah. For sure. But okay, it was good. I liked it. And here it is, fresh out of the broiler. As you can see, it's still boiling. This thing comes out piping hot. So make sure you give yourselves plenty of time to let it cool down. Because honestly, I think we can wait probably like 20, 25 minutes for it to Easily. cool down. And of course, the second Mike starts talking, the movie gets like a high, like oh, loud note fine. right now. <laughs> but so excited about this. I love this every single year. Okay, as we're letting it rest, we did sprinkle it with some thyme so we could get like a nice picture of it. Because, you know, if you're going to cook a dinner of like this, you know, you have to photograph it. You Otherwise, photograph it doesn't, it. it doesn't, it didn't happen. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so Mike is going to be the first one trying this. Mm -hmm. mm, very good. Yeah? Yes. Chef's kiss to I'm, yourself. I'm a good chef. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not too hot. I'm really glad. I feel like in the past, I keep the soup simmering in the Dutch oven, and then I ladle it immediately into the bowls, and then put it right into the broiler, and I go too fast. I kind of like that I let it kind of cool down a okay. little bit, so it's not so hot. Right. So I think we can actually eat it this time. Also, not to mention that Mike can eat, like, hot things. I cannot. Yeah, so, for like, sure. You can eat, like, a normally <laughs> normal hot, like, atomic level, but right. I can't, so I'm excited about this. And fast forward to the next day. So as you can tell, we definitely liked the soup last night. We settled in with the movie and had a great night. Uh, today, we're actually gonna leave the house pretty quickly, go grab some lunch, and also do a little bit of shopping. Update on this wonderful toy here. So if I could tell you this as a parent tip, pass on this, it's not good. It actually completely broke this morning, but as you can see, we're having to put some Neosporin on these scrapes. It, it was bad. Very bad. It's a little one. Looks like he got in a fight with Wolverine. Okay. All right, well, let's let it do its work. Should work better, okay? Aw. <laughs> okay, so we are home now. Uh, sorry, we haven't been vlogging very much because it's been a bit of a chaotic day for us. Um, I don't think Steve has mentioned this yet, but Steve is flying out first thing tomorrow for work travel. Um, he is upstairs right now with Caleb. We always kind of like to do, when, when Steve has to go on travel, um, he likes to kind of have his own night with Caleb for a little bit. Just, he's going to be gone for a full week. He won't see Caleb until next Sunday. So I feel like that's the longest he's been away. Um, since COVID. And it's funny too, because Caleb, he's actually kind of a little bummed out that he's gonna be gone for so long. So I think Caleb, is, as he's gotten older, he's definitely understood more and more what it means when dad goes out of town. And I think he misses him even more now. Like when they're little, obviously they don't even know. So, but we've been rushing around all day just to kind of get things in order. We went, some, we did some clothes shopping because I am also gonna be going out of town. And I'm not gonna say too much because I think Steve should be the one to tell you what we're doing. But I will just say this, Steve is flying out to Kentucky tomorrow for work travel. I fly out on Wednesday to Kentucky to meet him. Oh, I want to tell you guys. So you all packed? I am. I'm okay. packed for a straight week. So mm -hmm. uh, how much do you be? I told them that you're going out to, for business to Kentucky tomorrow, yes. and then I fly out on Wednesday Wednesday to meet you. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So I'm packing for a straight week because work plus fun, obviously, with Mike coming out there. But um, this is an early celebration thing for me. So my birthday this December, so it's not this week, this December, I turn 40. So yeah. 
you know, this is a great work trip, great timing here to go to Kentucky Bourbon Trail. So we're having Mike come out, a couple of our friends, super excited about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, We've heard very good things about it. We're very excited. Yeah. We have friends that are taking care of all the logistics and everything. So yeah. all we have to do is essentially show up, drink and eat. So it sounds great to us. So for people who don't know what this is, basically think of like going to Napa and having a weekend with wine country. Yeah. This is bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited. However, um, you know, doing a wine tasting, it's not that bad because you have little sips of wine and it's not the ABV is much lower. I'm yeah. wondering how we're all going to do with bourbon. So right. I, I, I feel confident <laughs> in myself, but I wonder how Mike will do and a few others. But yeah, <laughs> um, we were thinking about vlogging it, right? We're thinking about it. Yeah. Yes. If we do, it'll be on our phones because I don't know how much we can shoot inside the distilleries, yeah. especially more on a tour and a tasting and so forth. Agreed. So. Some of it's pretty limited, so we'll figure it out, but it'll be fun. We'll at least check in sometime in the hotel or whatever it yeah. is. It's going to give you our experience. So very excited. I have an early flight though. I have to get out of here at 6.15, so... <sighs> And I think that is going to do it for us tonight. I hope yeah. you like this video. It's I, I kind of forgot like what we have in here. We French have some French onion, onion soup. soup. We have a cocktail. We went shopping. There's a firefighter thing that we saw. Yeah. A little bit of everything. So yeah. It's, we had a fun weekend. It's been a great weekend. So. Yeah. But we hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And from our magic family to yours, enjoy. enjoy.